Welcome back everyone. Today we have one of the largest portable power stations that we've ever tested on this channel. This is the Ops Mega 5 portable power station. And this thing is so heavy that the delivery driver decided to leave it at the end of my driveway. And later in the video, I'll show you. Yes, I do have my dolly to move this thing back to the house, but I'm not gonna need that once I get this thing unboxed. So let's get this thing bumped up to the studio and see what it can do. And this thing is super heavy and with that heaviness is one of the largest batteries that I've ever tested. This thing is like 5,000 watt hours, which is like two to three times larger than the power station that I currently use in my no build minivan camper. And on top of that, the AC inverter, which is what most of our household appliances run off of, is massive. It's rated to sustain continuous loads up to 4,000 watts which is almost twice what my normal power stations are on this channel. Usually things run around 2000 watt hours and it's hard for me to overload those AC inverters while this AC inverter is twice that size. So I'm excited to see what I can do with it today. This box with the label, with the packaging is 129 pounds. So I'm also curious to see how heavy this thing is outside of the box. And so what that means is you're probably not gonna be moving this power station around very often, but when you do have to move it around, it does have a handle and wheels that will make it much more portable. And so now that I've got this thing on my porch, let's get it unboxed and see what's inside. These straps are much stronger than I'm used to. This thing is massive. And so I needed my dolly to get this up the road, but now this baby has wheels of its own. And well, that's a pretty useful handle there, at least on this hard surface. There are two star features of this Ops Mega 5. The first one is this massive 4,000 watt AC inverter that can also accept surges up to 7,000 watts. I feel like for today's testing, the limiting factor for me will not be the amount of power that I can put out of it, but the amount of outlets I have to put my devices into. I say that because I don't really have any devices that pull 4,000 watts. And in fact, most of my devices pull one to 2,000 watts. So if I hit that 4,000 watt range, I'll need to have all of these outlets plugged in. Another massive star on the Mega 5 is this DC panel. You can power essentially any 12 volt device out there with this 360 watt Anderson power pole plug. The one thing that kind of surprises me is that these two USB-C's are only rated at up to 60 watts. It is typical nowadays to see a 100 watt USB-C. With that being said, 60 watts is still a lot relative to most of the portable devices that you'll charge with this. Moving down to the bottom, we do have our three 15 watt USB a's and then finally we have the small 10 watt usba for 2023 most of the major power station manufacturers have gone away with these 55 21 barrel plugs but in the case of the ops mega 5 we have two of them and in addition to that we do have this marine grade 120 watt car charging outlet charging the mega 5 is relatively easy and there are three main ways that you can plug it in the first two are on this side and they're your pretty typical wall input or Anderson power pole input. Using the wall input, you can put up to 2000 watts into the power station and using the Anderson power pole input, you can put up to 2100 watts. Now, one feature that's relatively common on these newer, larger portable power stations is EV charging capability. The Mega 5 accepts a standard EV charging input and it is still rated at around 2000 watts. So no matter how you plug this thing in, it's still gonna take you about two and a half hours to charge from empty. I almost forgot, we do have a few accessory cables in the box that I'd like to share with you. These cables can help you hook up to almost anything except for the EV charging input. First up is the wall charging cable. And of the three ways you can charge the Ops Mega 5, this will be your fastest rated at 2100 watts. <laughs> Next up is this car charging cable. So 
If you have about a week to spare and you have an empty Opus Mega 5, use that time to drive around for about 50 to 70 hours and you might obtain a full state of charge in that time. Next up is our Anderson Power Pole to Anderson Power Pole adapter. This cable really has two functions for this device. You can possibly use it as an input adapter for a solar panel that uses Anderson Power Pole inputs, or you can use it as an extension for this 360 watt outlet on the DC panel. I'm super glad that they included this cable because this is a 7909 barrel plug to Anderson Power Pole adapter. And a lot of your older folding solar panels come equipped with this output as well as some of the older power charging bricks. So you might be able to use this to adapt to one of those 7909 barrel plugs or eight millimeter barrel plugs that you might have laying around. And then finally, I feel like we'll be getting a lot of use out of this. This is our Anderson Power Pole to MC4 adapter. I can use this to hook up to my solar panel array directly without needing any additional adapters. I don't have a 2000 watt solar panel array, but I'm curious to see how these cables would function with that array. They do feel a little thin and 2000 watts might be a little bit much for this adapter. So I'm gonna go straight into shock and all with the AC inverter. I have something plugged into every outlet on this device. To turn on the Opus Mega 5, I'm gonna hold the power button for about five seconds until I see that LED screen light up. Now that it's lit up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on that AC inverter. It did go down to zero, and so let's just go ahead and start cranking things up. This little heater pulls around 1500 watts. It spiked right up, and you can hear the fan in the Opus kicking on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the toaster oven. That bumped us straight up to 2000 watts. I'm gonna turn on my My Heat heater. Now we're at 2,200 watts almost, and that should level off around 2,300 watts. So right now what I have going on if I was camping is I have a heat source, I have a toaster oven, I have another heat source, I've got my little egg cooker cooking, and then finally I'm going to go ahead and boil some water. All right, so we hit around 3,600 watts pretty quick with all these accessories but it's not enough. So I think I'm gonna have to pull out the heat gun. I bumped out the little My Heat heater that was only giving us about 200 watts. And I'm gonna go straight to the heat gun. And let's just go to that 4,000 watts and see what happens. I heard it hit around 4,000 watts. And at this point, the AC inverter did shut off. But before it shut off, it did attenuate the voltage a little bit so that it would allow for the inverter to put out about that 4,000 watts and then it gave out. I did expect that, but what I want to do now is plug in my voltmeter so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is rated as a 120 volt outlet. And as I hit that 4,000 watt limit and go above it, you'll notice that the voltage will start to drop just a little. And I want to get that a little better. I want to get close to that 4,000 watts. And before it gives out, the voltage has dropped to 110. We're gonna let it run like this for a couple of seconds and see if we can trigger that drop. Okay, so there we have it. So the AC inverter will spike to that 4,000 watt limit. It will go above that for just a few seconds. And when that happens, it will drop the voltage to protect the inverter a little bit. That's exactly what I would expect from this device. And on top of that, in reality, I would never have all these things plugged in at one time. So that's an absolute win for this AC inverter. This thing easily hits that 2000 watt AC input and bumps up in between 2100 and 1900 watts while it's charging. While it's charging the rest of the way, let me tell you a little bit about its features. The first big elephant with this portable power station in the room is its weight. This thing is a massive, 5,040 watt hour battery. And with that massive battery comes a massive weight of 112 pounds. And that means getting it up onto my bench here was a little bit of a heavy lift for me. The Mega 5 is 17.9 inches tall, 25.2 inches wide and 11.9 inches deep. So compared to some other lower capacity power stations that I've tested, this thing is pretty compact. This Mega 5 is compatible with the Opus app. In my previous video about the Opus Mega 2, I did a complete overview of that app and its functions. So if you want to find out more about how that Opus app works, check out that other video after this. If you've seen an Opus product before, then you might be familiar with this display. 
I didn't confirm, but this display is almost identical to that that I had in my Ops 1200 portable power station last year. This thing is packed full of information. It shows you your output power, input power. It shows whether your car outlet is on or off, as well as whether your USB outlets are on or off. Additionally, over where the AC information is, it shows that I'm at 60 hertz and putting out 119 volts. Every so often I see this bump up between 119 and 120. And as I'm using the AC outlets, this will show the correct voltage. So essentially that LCD display is just about the same as every other Ops portable power station that I've had before. I'm not surprised that it hasn't changed on this latest generation because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It already has all the information that we need and it's decently visible in direct sunlight. I'm actually quite surprised with the value packed into this portable power station. Pound for pound, this is one of the best deals in terms of dollars per watt hour that you can get in 2023. And even going into the 2024 season, I think that you'll be hard pressed to find a power station that has such a huge battery in it at such a low cost. Opes has stepped up their game significantly with this latest generation, and you can double the power by either combining another power station or adding an expansion battery to this system further making it a better deal. And on top of that, this can serve as a legitimate backup power supply in the event of power outages. So if you are somewhere where you're possibly without power for days, maybe two or three days, one of these can power your entire home for that time. Now by saying that, I do mean that you probably won't be running your HVAC system. You may have to shut off your hot water heater. So cooking, lighting, charging, all of your electronics, and even if you have something like a propane water heater or propane heater, you'll be able to run the electronic components of that with something like this. Standing beside this thing, you can really tell how big it is. Remember, this does weigh 112 pounds. It is a massive power station. With that massive size and weight, it comes with a massive power output of 4,000 watts and a 5,040 watt hour battery. Currently, Opes has the Mega 5 marked down to $26.99 for their flash Christmas sale. On top of that, essentially everything in their stock is marked down as well. If you wanna find out the current price or any updates, please check the link in the video description. And as always, please subscribe or give this video a thumbs up if you're already subscribed and I'll see you on my next adventure.